story. A Time Magazine cover story, it's creating a lot of controversy in it. Managing editor Rick Stengel wondering why the Tea Party folks are in such a fuss over what may be America's most important document, the Constitution. You see it there on the cover being shredded. Stengel writing, quote, if the Constitution was intended to limit the federal government, it sure doesn't say so. Well, a fair and balanced debate about what it does say. Sally Cohn, founder of movementvision.org, and also radio talk show host Ben Ferguson. Welcome to you both. Hi. Thanks for having us. All right, Sally, I got to throw out that first uh, little statement there we have from Stengel uh, about this not limiting the federal government. I mean, certainly there are checks and balances built in, there are limits on the executive branch. Uh, what do you make of where we are in 2011 with that Constitution drafted back in 1787? Uh, the Constitution is alive and well, and thank goodness, but also thank goodness uh, that it's a living, breathing document. I mean, look, over two, two centuries ago, uh, the founders, uh, who in their infinite wisdom created a nation, created a government, uh, also knew, they were smart enough to know that they didn't know everything, and so they created a document that could grow and change with the times. Uh, uh, James Madison himself said that you have to look at the historical context when you're reading the text of the uh, Constitution, or otherwise you are subverting and perverting it. And that's what we do today, thankfully. And Ben, I mean, it's true that the founders did not know back then about planes and DNA and uh, all kinds of technology and computers that we have now. So how are we to decide or infer what they may have wanted to happen in those circumstances? Well, I think they wrote the document. It was pretty obvious for an issue of values, an issue of guidelines, issues of uh, of a foundation for this country. And I don't think those change. I mean, one of the things this article he said was the founding fathers didn't know that Lady Gaga would be around. That's not a very compelling argument for me to say, oh, let's completely reinterpret the Constitution. I mean, one of the great things about the Constitution is the fact that there is so much debate about it every single year. And if we start to say it now has become obsolete, that's when we get in trouble. It is a center point of our government. It is a center point of our foundation. And it should be treated as such. But what you see now is people trying to say it's so outdated, it's so old, we don't really need to do it anymore, we don't need to use it anymore or put it in context because the world has changed so much. I think they knew the world was changing. They were changing the world when they wrote it. Well, and the Tea Party, this has been at the center of a lot of their arguments the last year or two as that party and that movement has come together, is that they say it's time for us to return to it. Sally, are you one of those who thinks the Tea Party is exploiting or misusing the Constitution in some way? Well, I don't think we ever left the Constitution. I'm grateful for uh, the Tea Party and folks who have reminded us uh, about these founding documents of our country that we, we need to celebrate more. Uh, but let's be clear. Uh, you know, thankfully, uh, again, the founders created our great nation, but they were never perfect. Over two centuries ago, they started us on a journey. It was the beginning of a journey. It wasn't the end. The Constitution is the beginning of our country, not the end. And, you know, for founders who owned slaves, who didn't believe uh, that uh, African Americans should be people, that didn't believe that women should vote, that believed women should be the property of their husbands, thank goodness, as a nation, we follow their advice and let that document evolve. It doesn't mean we get rid of it, but it means we evolve. And, and Ben, of course, we've had the amending process that has handled a number of those issues and, and, and you know, things that people have viewed as flaws or things that were wrong with the original intent of the Constitution. So if it's been amended, does that mean it's imperfect? Well, I don't think it's per se imperfect. I think there's one thing to realize that when society changes and grows, I mean, look how big America is compared to when they wrote it, that yes, sometimes there needs to be, uh, you know, add-ons. But what, what worries me the most is when people try to act like the document has become somehow, you know, obsolete or it's somehow old news or it somehow really doesn't apply. It does apply and it should apply. And I'm glad that people are bringing this subject up because the Constitution is a living document. It is not dead. Some people are trying to turn into this trivial, dead, old school piece of information or history that we should, you know, look at and say, oh, that was nice in the day. It's still real today and it should be to everyone in Washington in DC. Uh, and Sally, how much does this this debate over the document and what it does or doesn't mean? How much does it point to the importance of the uh, appointment of judges, especially to something like the Supreme Court? Uh, well, okay, first of all, uh, I'm sorry Ben's so upset, but I actually don't know anyone 
uh, on either side of the uh, partisan aisle who believes that the, do uh, that the Constitution is a, a dead and old and obsolete document. Anyone that uh, criticizes I, I, the Tea Party I, I, says I, they take it too literal. I, I, so that's the that's well, side I'm second. talking about. Wait a second, Ben. Taking a document too literally, as in reading it uh, in 2011 as though it were still the 18th century, is different than saying it's an obsolete document. Are you saying that they First should not all, read it on the floor of the House of Representatives the I'm way not, they open this session, the Republicans? Are you no, saying that's saying a that, waste ben. of putting, time? Ben, you're putting words in my mouth. I'm not saying that we shouldn't I'm asking read. you a question. I'm not putting words in your mouth. I'm not saying we shouldn't read the document. I'm saying that when it comes to applying the document, we have to be do as Madison and the founders told us to, which is bear in mind the current day's history. I mean, come on, we have internet, we have television, we have cars, we have, t you know, all of these things the founders... How does the mind, car, we how does the car change the Constitution? So, Shannon, and ben. Shannon, to your question, it's a living document and we need judges who, who understand Time. that. All right. Thank you very much for the spirited debate, both of you, Sally and Ben. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you. All right.